What's going on guys? Aaron here and today I'm bringing you another video. This time it's about amps. It's an amps tutorial. Uh, it's actually uh, a response to a user who had written in and asked how do you go about restoring an amps backup that's been saved to the desktop. So we're going to be covering that in this video, but we're also going to be covering how to go about backing up an amps website so that you can have different versions, let's say. So if you screw something up, you can restore from that prior backup and it won't be a problem. So come with me over to the Mac. I'll see you there and we'll learn together. All right, guys, let's get started. So as you can see, I am working on a Mac right now, but this tutorial should be applicable to amps running on any of the major platforms that it is meant to run on. So I have my amps installation open over here. The first thing you want to do is click on the little home icon and that's going to open up the amps dashboard if you will. Okay, so I have my default browser, it's Safari, it's open. And I already have a website running. It is just a basic WordPress installation, as vanilla as it comes, no customization. Okay, so I've already uh, installed it. If you go over to all installations and you click on that little little box that you normally store documents in, it's like an archive button, you click on that and it opens up and it shows you the different websites that you have saved and that can run from within the AMPS platform. So here I have a WordPress installation, it's a website at this particular uh, URL which is a local host and it's in the WP directory. So I'm going to click on that just to open it in, in a new tab so you can see what it looks like. Super, super basic, but it's just something for the purposes of this tutorial to show you how uh, version control works using backups and also how to restore from a particular backup. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the first tab and as you can see I have that installation. I'm going to go over to the backups and restore panel. Now this panel or a dashboard if you will is going to be crucial for the purposes of this tutorial because it's where you will find the backups of your site that you've made, the different versions, and also it's where you would find the backups to restore from so that you can uh, either revert back to a previous version or revert to a version of the website where no installation is currently present of that particular site on the current system. So let's click on the little zippered file icon and if you hover over it you do see that tooltip that says backups and restore and we're going to click on that. Alright, so this is actually a backup that I made just a little bit earlier, maybe a few minutes ago, of the website. It has some information over here detailing the particular installation, the date, and I believe a timestamp. Okay, it shows you the size of the backup, and this backup happens to include a, um, you know, a backup of the files and of the database. Uh, but I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. It shows the version of the WordPress. You don't have to be using WordPress, I believe, to do this, but I am. And here's a little note that I saved to actually identify this particular backup. And if you just hover over the little notepad uh, icon, you'll see that tooltip, which is first version. And that's just like my first commit if you're used to using Git, uh, which you if you are, you probably wouldn't need this. But if you aren't, then this is sort of like a commit or a version save. And it says first version, okay? And here you can see you can download the backup, you can restore from the backup, or you can delete the backup. All right, so that's my initial version. It's the same version that you see right here. Okay, I want to show you, though, what it looks like to backup a website and what it looks like to restore from a backup. So let's do that right now. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make a change to this website. So I'm going to go to customize. All right. I'm going to wait for that to open up. And as you can see, I can change the name of the site right here, which I will, from my blog to amps tutorial and from my WordPress blog to um, backups and rest oops, restoring them. Okay? So from here I'm going to save and publish. And so as you can see, I'm going to hit the X, I've made a change to my website and it is different than it was before, of course. So now I'm going to save that version so that any subsequent changes that are made won't potentially screw up the work that I've just done 
and potentially cost me uh, a major setback. Now in this case, it's kind of a trivial example because I've just changed a little bit of text in the most uh, you know, simplistic way, but make believe I've made major changes to this site and now I wanna make sure that I save them um, so that they don't get screwed up uh, in the future. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the installation, all installations, click on that, and I'm gonna go over to the little folder with the green arrow, I'm gonna click on that and that's how you back it up. I'm going to leave everything defaulted, check off, make sure the backup directory is checked off and the database, and I'm going to make a little notation. Changed website title and subheading. Let's just leave a little bit of a note. Here are some more details about the installation, and you can click backup installation. It doesn't take very long for this process to occur, especially just on a local installation of a website. And as you can see, it's finished. Now to confirm that it's been done, you can go to the little zippered file and click on that. And there you'll see under this particular website, you will see this should be the original. And this is the, oh, I'm sorry, this is the original and this is the latest version. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is how to restore from a backup. So in this particular case, instead of um, undoing these changes, okay, I'm going to revert back to the previous version that had the defaulted title and subheading, so the default text. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back over to the backups, and I'm gonna look for the original, which I believe is this one, and you can identify it technically by time, but best to actually identify it using a little tooltip over the little notebook. And you can see first version, and see that's the one with the change title and subheading. So we're gonna go over to the first version, and we're going to actually click the little counterclockwise uh, purple arrow, and we're going to click on that, where it's going to restore the backup. So we're going to leave both of these checked, and we're going to hit restore installation. Are you sure? Yes. Give it a moment, and it's going to restore the backup so that the website looks as it did uh, just prior to those changes. So here we go. We're going to go over to the website, and as you can see, it's still in the state that we last left it. And I'm going to refresh the website, and as you can see, the text reverted, which is my blog and my WordPress blog. Okay, so now you can see how I just restored from a version that was made prior to the changes that we just had made before. Okay, and I can go back and forth. I can go forward if I wanted to. I can go back to the little zippered file for the backups and restore. I can find the second one, the second backup, and I can restore from that one just as easily. Give that a moment. switch tabs, refresh, and you can see the changes come back just as I had made them prior. Okay, so now we're going to go back and I'm going to actually address the question that was specifically asked in the comment. How do you restore from a backup, let's say, of a website that is saved to the desktop? So now you actually need to navigate the file system a little bit in order to do the restore. Well, this is an extreme example of what I'm going to show you, of what the question that was asked. I'm going to show you a more extreme example where, let's say, a backup of the files and database are saved in a tarball, let's say, to the uh, desktop, but the actual installation doesn't exist in any capacity in AMPS. I'm going to show you that particular example, okay? So the first thing I'm going to have to show you, I'm going to just skim by these details because I'm going to go into them in depth in just a minute. I'm going to open up my backup and I'm going to move it out here. So this, oops, don't want the alias, excuse me. So this is actually, let's make sure we did this right, let's do it again. Okay, so this is the backup that I had made prior and actually I'm going to have the second one too. Okay, so now I have both versions here. And I'm going to delete both backups from the location that we initially restored them and saved them to. And so they're now gone. So now if we go into AMPS and we click on here, the backups and restore panel, it has no recollection of any backups because they've been removed from the default location. And right now, even though the site is working, and I can refresh that, I just use Command R, all right, it has no backups. So if I delete this installation by clicking on the little All Installations button, red X, leave these all checked, 
remove installation, it will delete the installation. So if I go back here and refresh this, nothing is found. Okay, so now what I'm going to say is how do you go about doing that? I'm going to show you exactly how you do that. So what you do is you have to find the default location of where AMPS is looking for the backups and saving the backups. You click on the little backups and restore icon and you click manage backup locations and down over here you can see this this is the location that is currently selected so in my case it's under the applications folder this is the main uh, you know the base directory okay of the entire drive applications amps private and softaculous backups so I happen to have a shortcut going to applications right here and so I'm going to open amps and I'm going to follow that path right through private and into Softaculous backups, and then I'm going to open in Finder. Now you can do this straight through Finder, but I find it easy to have a little shortcut to applications right down here in the dock. And then I can just click through like I did. So I went through uh, the subdirectories so that I can follow this path. And as you can see, there's a temporary folder in here, not containing anything right now, but just leave that alone. And find the backup that you want to restore from that's pretty much self-contained from the desktop. Okay, so I'm going to take this one. Let's see which version this is. I'm going to find the information here. This one it was made at 648. This is the 639 version. So I'm going to take the modified version. Why not? Okay, and I'm going to take the modified version, and I'm going to literally, I'll make a copy. I don't feel like dragging it in and moving it, so I just held down Option and drag, or you can just you know, use Command C, Command V, or Control C, Control V on a PC and copy a version in there. Just, you know, so that we don't need to commit, you know, all our eggs into one basket. And now that you see it's within this defaulted location, we can go back to the AMPS panel, click on the little zippered file, and now it reappears. The backup reappears. And, and notice this little tiny uh, notice that it provides. It says, installation has been removed. Okay, and it shows you the location where it was previously installed. It says you can restore it using the backup. So that's exactly what we're going to do. No installation currently exists there, and we're going to make it there, you know, restore it from scratch. So that's what we're going to do right here, clicking the restore. And by the way, the note is still there. This is the changed one with the title and subheading. And we're going to restore it right now. Leave these both checked. Restore installation. OK. Give it a moment. And sure enough, it's finished. And if we go back over here, we refresh the page, it is back where we had left it off with the changes. All right, so there you go. How to back up, how to restore, and how to also restore from a backup that's saved in a location other than the default AMPS backup location. All right, there you guys go. Uh, I will see you uh, in the closing of this video. All right, guys, hopefully you found that helpful. Hopefully you took something away that you can use on your own projects and in your own work. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button, the thumbs up button. If you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful, don't forget to check out my other videos on the Computer Dynamo channel right down below. Don't forget to hit the red subscribe button for more videos, of course. And until next time, don't forget to do what makes you happy. Follow your passions. This is Aaron. Signing out.